Not one, but two movies have joined the Billion Dollar Club in 2024, so today we're ranking all eight movies that have grossed over $1 billion at the box office. What's going on guys, my name is Trevor, welcome back to the channel. What is your ranking of the eight movies that have grossed over $1 billion at the box office from 2020 till 2024? Eight movies, we're going to rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. Hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell, let's hop into this. In last place is Jurassic World Dominion. This movie solely grossed a billion dollars just because of the name and the trailers for this movie. Shout out the marketing team because I was head over heels excited for this one. You basically had an Avengers level cast in the Jurassic World universe all back in this movie you brought back every character you brought back dr grant who was like my childhood hero growing up then you turn it to this movie about lotus which is basically giant grasshoppers and there was like a spy espionage dr grant's like going undercover now it just basically was a huge mess incredibly boring but it still made a billion dollars and i'm really worried about the upcoming jurassic world movie at number seven is Barbie. There is an enormous leap in quality from Barbie to Jurassic World Dominion. Dominion is one of my least favorite movies of the decade. Barbie, I had a ton of fun with this one. Now, I am definitely not the target audience for this one, but I saw this one with my wife and one of my wife's best friends, and they absolutely loved it. From start to finish, I thought it was hilarious. All the jokes were really landing with them. For me, I appreciated what this movie was, what Greta Gerwig gave us, and the message behind it. That's about all I could appreciate throughout this entire movie was the message was good. It's definitely not my target audience. I was 24 years year old guy when I saw this movie, but I could appreciate it. Ryan Gosling is Ken was fantastic. Margot Robbie is Barbie and American Ferrera. Shout out everyone. Shout out Greta Gerwig. It was just a fun summer vibe. At number six, the Super Mario Brothers movie. This movie just rules. Everything you could have wanted in a Mario Brothers movie, this movie has. The Mario Kart race is fantastic. The animation style is absolutely beautiful, but just the story of the Mario Brothers, while Luigi's not really in this one, is still just so fun to watch and go on this journey, go on this entire quest throughout the entire film. It's getting a sequel, rightfully so, and a lot of people were like not crazy about the story, but for me, just getting a movie about Mario going into this world and basically seeing all the characters we got to play as as kids, even now on Nintendo Switch, I still play Super Mario Bros. It was just so much fun. So the Super Mario Bros. movie was hilarious. I love the way they built it up with the brothers starting a business and then they go into the world and it's just, it's perfect. It really just nailed it on the head. At number five is Deadpool and Wolverine. This is the most recent movie to join the Billion Dollar Club. And on first watch, I loved it. Didn't have many problems with it. On second watch, I had a lot more problems with it. It is extremely slow in the beginning. The opening number is fantastic. And then it goes into just this whole TVA explanation that kind of loses me just a little bit. And it's really painfully unfunny on second viewing. I mean, it is never serious, even for a dull moment. Even in the moments it's being serious, it just kind of loses it throughout the sauce. Ryan Reynolds is hilarious as always, but at times it becomes painfully unfunny because the humor does not land. It's like Thor Ragnarok. It's really what it reminds me of. The first time was hilarious. The second time, like, this is really not that funny. And if I went to go watch it a third time, I'd probably have more problems with it. Hugh Jackman's performance, my favorite part about this entire one, you had a very solid villain, and seeing the cameos throughout it, especially Gambit, I mean, whoo, I'm gonna make a news for myself here. At number four is Inside Out 2, the first movie in 2024 to join the Billion Dollar Club. This movie just hits you right in the feels, and I was so curious how this movie would do at the box office. I was so curious what new story they'd be able to tell, and Riley was really the main focal point throughout this one. Well, the first time, she was really just a side character, but this time we got to focus on Riley going on a journey with her, and you get introduced to the character of Anxiety, who just felt so real, and it just literally hit so close to home several times. I was like, I'm relating a little too much to this one right now. But then by the end, you're just going to be hitting the feels all over again because Joy's like, maybe when you're older, you just feel less joy. I'm like, whoa, am I crying in the club right now? I'm about to be. It's a beautiful movie. It's one of my favorite movies of the entire year, and I can't believe it's this low on the list. Yeah, number three, Avatar The Way of Water. I've seen this movie three times in theaters. I watch it at home all the time. I am a defender of the Avatar movies. While, yes, the villain is just not that good. It's basically the same story as the first one. I understand all of your complaints. But nonetheless, I just love this movie. I love Jake Sully. I love the family dynamic throughout this one. You have Lost throughout this one. The character Spider can suck it. He's awful. I absolutely despise this character. But 
diving back into this world of Pandora is nothing short of extraordinary. It is breathtaking. It is mesmerizing. And the whole, like, the harpooning of, like, the whale scene was so brutal to watch. But, like, seeing the outcast whale, I have chills just thinking about it. This movie, when I watched it the first time in theaters, I was jaw-dropped to the floor. The visuals are beautiful. This family dynamic is fantastic. I'm a defender of the Avatar movies. Give me 27 of them. At number two is Spider-Man No Way Home. If I could relive any movie in a theater, it might be Spider-Man No Way Home because this theater experience was, like, nothing I've ever experienced before or probably ever will again. Everyone knew Toby and Andrew were showing up. It was just a matter of when. My theater went so loud. You would have thought people were filming us for a reaction how loud it was. You could not hear for pretty much like five minutes after they got introduced. It was so epic. It was so awesome. On rewatch, it doesn't hit the same, but nonetheless, seeing this for the first time, experiencing this for the first time, it's the ultimate Spider-Man movie. But in a way, Spider-Man puts his friends and family first at the end of the movie where everyone's safer without knowing who he is. I mean, it just hits really, really hard. It shows the maturity of this character. I love this movie. And every time I go back to rewatch it, I just have so much fun with it. But at number one is Top Gun Maverick. This is arguably my favorite movie of all time. Tom Cruise is just the man who does not age. And he comes back as Pete Maverick Mitchell. And he gives us a way better movie than the first Top Gun. And the supporting cast throughout this one. Miles Teller, Glenn Powell. These characters were so badass. And the training montage towards the beginning is just epic to show that Maverick still has it. But then the two minutes and 15 seconds scene, I talk about it all the time. That's one of my favorite scenes in cinematic history. Where basically he's just told to kick rocks like you're not in charge of this anymore takes matters into his own hands could be arrested dishonorably discharged and two minutes and 15 seconds it is the most epic well shot intense scene everywhere you're just watching maverick with everyone else it's a fantastic scene this is one of my favorite if not my favorite movies of all time it saved cinemas and i absolutely love topic of maverick it's my favorite billion dollar movie of the decade and one of my favorite billion dollar movies of all time let me know your ranking of all eight billion dollar movies from this decade down below in the comments section. Hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Thank you guys for watching and for being here. I'll see you very soon.